Many students confuse the interest rate with the foreign currency by using the forward rate agreement or the FIA contract and the forward market hedge agreement because these contracts are over the counter contract which means dealing with the counterparty usually gambling with the bank and these contracts are binding so this means that if you agree the future interest rate to borrow or deposit money or the future foreign exchange rate to receive your money or to pay your foreign currency you will have to exercise this contract now firstly let's see the FIA now in the exam you may be seeing the quote of the FIA such like this now firstly create your scenario here we may be starting to borrow a hundred million dollars in five months time for a duration of four months so this means that we'll start in five months so we choose the FRA quote starting with five and because for a duration of four months so in other words five plus four starting from five months and then up to the nine months so five to nine so this means that we need to select the quote from the FRA for the first one, okay, five to nine. Because we need to borrow, and this means that we always borrow at a higher interest rate. So we select 4% there. And of course, if I were to deposit, I would need to choose 3.8% there. Now, for any given businesses, that the interest rate that they need to pay if they borrow from the bank, not just comprise with the LIBOR rate, which means the London Interbank Offer rate would be the rates the bank would borrow money from each other, but at the same time needs to plot the credit spread. The credit spread solely reflects that entity's specific financial risk. So in other words, in this case, the business borrows some money from more borrows some money from the bank would be at the addition of 0.5% there as the credit spread, which only reflects our financial risk. Of course, that would be determined by the bank on a case-by-case -case basis here. If I were to use the FRA, which means the full rate agreement there, so today I will lock the future interest rates to borrow money from the bank in five months' time for $100 million. So this means that, firstly, when we are computing the actual payment, firstly, we need to see that lock rate of 4% on that $100 million. And we borrow for a duration of four months, and we time, times by four over 12. So we need to pay interest of $1.3 million as a starting point. However, the rate we agree would just to be the guarantee rate against the future LIBOR rate, which means if the future LIBOR rate would be 4.3%, but because we have already entered the FRA agreement before, so you can use 4% in the end. And that will be the first step here. The second step to compute additional interest, you need to consider the credit spread for 0.5% which solely reflects the entity's specific risk. So for that $100 million, so you will need to pay additionally 0.5% on that. And for a duration of four months, so you need to pay $0.17 million. So the total interest plus 1.3 and 0.17 together, and that becomes $1.47 million. So make sure that you divide your steps related to interests into two. Firstly, the locked rate per the FRA, and then the credit spread. Of course, for a total payment, you're also to pay the principal of $100 million as well. Okay, so the total payment, including interest and the redemption value, will be 
a hundred plus one point forty seven million dollars there. Okay, so that solely reflects if the entity borrows or deposits money into the future. However, what if we will be receiving foreign currency or paying foreign currency into the future, we will need to look at the forward market hedge. So in other words, we agree with the bank that what exchange rate we will be using at some point in the future when we receive the foreign currency or we pay the foreign currency. Now, to do this, what you have to do is to understand how the rate actually works here. For example, we may be seeing the quote from the bank for three months forward rate quotes from the bank. As you can say, we have got for one UK pound that can be exchanged into 2.0383 US dollars. Alternatively, can be exchanged into 390 US dollars. So if I can see the quote such as this, I can see the currency after the stroke would be the base currency. Here will be the UK pound as the base currency. Now what do I mean by base currency is that we always look at the base currency. It's like when you're buying an apple, you like to ask how much is an apple charged. The apple is charged, for example, 2.0383 or 390. And that's what I mean by the apple. It's like the UK pound here. All right then. So we know the base currency. Now, let's see a scenario here. Firstly, if in three months' time we need to pay $7.5 million is the foreign currency, for example, we are based in the UK. So if that's the case then, as a step one, you will need to determine that base currency here as the UK pound. And sec second step, because we need to pay the USD, which is the foreign currency, to pay that USD, very important key that you need to remember that, because you're based in the UK, in order to pay USD, you only got pound, and you need to buy the USD first. And because the USD is not the base currency, you always keep an eye on to the base currency. In order to buy USD, you will need to sell the UK pound. And then, as a step four there, you will need to remember that rule because the bank will always make a profit from it because the bank will store these foreign currencies and charging you additional costs. And certainly, you will need to sell at a lower price and to buy at a higher price. Because here, you will need to sell the UK pound and you will need to choose a lower price. And what do I mean by lower price? Okay, 383 is lower than 390, right? So the left hand side will be the lower price, and the right hand side will be the higher price. And here, because you need to sell the UK pound, and therefore you will need to pick up the lower price being 2.0383 dollars stroke UK pound. Final step there. Final step there. What you need to do is to put the foreign currency worth of 7.5 million and then the exchange rates that you've determined that being 2.0383 dollars stroke UK pound and all you need to do as the final step is if the first currency will be the same in order to arrive at the second currency you will need to use divide simple as that of course, if these two currencies are not the same, you will need to use multiply. So if you divide one into another, and that would give you 3.7 million pound. So what do I mean by 3.7 million dollars pound? It means that in order to pay 7.5 million dollars in three months time, we need to sell 3.7 million UK pounds at the agreed exchange rate, 
using the forward market hedge. So that we can convert this into $7.5 million in order to settle that payment in three months' time. And that's all we can do. Now, let's look at another example here. For example, in three months' time, you are due to receive the foreign currency of $7.5 million. Firstly, again, you need to determine that base currency from the quote, again, is in the, in, in the UK pound. And second, you will need to receive the $7.5 million as the foreign currency. Remember here, in the previous example, we need to pay that foreign currency. This is why we need to buy the USD. But now, if you were to receive the USD, but you are based in the UK, there's no point in keeping that USD at all. And here, you would like to sell those USD to convert into UK pounds, because I like to use the UK pounds to buy whatever things I want in the UK. And therefore, as you can say, to sell those USD to convert into UK pounds, effectively, we are selling the USD and to buy the UK pound, which means we always keep an eye on to the base currency to determine which rate that we are going to be using, either the lower or the higher rate. And here, again, we buy at a higher price because we sell at the lower price. The higher price here will be on the right-hand side, which means the 2.0390 on the right-hand side. So we choose 2.0390 on the right-hand side. As the final step, as you can see, we put the foreign currency on the left-hand side of 7.5 million, because the first currency being the same, we use divide, and that being 3.7 million UK pound. So what does that mean? It means that in three months' time, when we receive up 7.5 million as the foreign currency in the USD, we to sell those USD at the agree rate, and to convert and to buy the UK pound being 3.68 million UK pounds. So in other words, in three months' time, the amount of UK pounds we are guaranteed to receive would be 3.68. In a previous example, in three months' time, the UK pounds that we guarantee to pay would be 3.7 million in order to settle that payment of 7.5 million dollars there. So make sure that you can now distinguish the forward rate agreement with the forward market hedge. One is to deal with the interest rate, one is to deal with the exchange rate, and they are completely different. My name is Steve Chen, the fellow member of ACCA, and I hope you enjoyed this section. I look forward to your ACCA Advanced Financial Management or the AFM exam success very soon. Bye for now then. APC, accounting for your future.